Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek and Origins 2018. I'm sitting down with George and Hattie Anthony. How are you guys? Good. Good. And I love the name of your company, which is not my eyeball games. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, which, before we get into your game, was there any particular inspiration for the company name? Uh, something eye-catching. Uh, oh, well, uh, that, was, that was it. <laughs> well, you guys have brought us a center shaft, fallen elements. Um, so give us a brief walkthrough of what kind of game is this? What are we trying to accomplish? It's a take that game, and it's a uh, racing game. So you're wanting to go through and obtain each element room, not particularly the elements themselves. So this is the element token that mm -hmm. you would get. So you got the, uh, the oh, cards yeah. here. There we go. Uh -huh. So there's one of this my. This is your power. journal. And when you go through and then you obtain a room, you have to walk on it and then walk back out. Once you get that, you get this too. But if it's not there, you still have to get that. And then you mark it up. Ah, on, on your card there. So you're so investigating. I, the room. I have learned something about fire. <laughs> that was one thing that people get confused about. They think, oh, you just get these and go. <laughs> these help. These are kind of like a weapon. Well, when you acquire a gem, it shows on the back of the rule book here. It has a power with it, so you got uh, each one of them has a different power with it, uh, an ability that you can use during the play of the game. So it's a little incentive to try and yes. go get that yes. first, so you get that cool thing. Yeah, right. You have more than one. You get multiple, but it doesn't require you to win the game. It helps. Now, so on a turn, are we just, a, is this a card-based yeah. game? You draw or a card. There we go. And then you mark up your movement by using the strategic Move. movement points yes. on, the, on the thing. So whenever you decide, well, I'm going to take a 12. When you fill that up, you reset. Ah, so if you spend your 12 and your 9 early, you're mm -hmm. going to be stuck moving slow for a so while. So you're really thinking about what you're going to use. Because you can be stuck with a 3. And you might need, you know, more. And the, the game board moves as you're playing it. You got cards like this dimensional shift card right here. This this one's what changed the game. You could take a tile as long as the board connects in some fashion. These can be free floating because they're board cards. You can go from one to two, from two to three to four. And then you can actually take and move tiles around. So I take this tile, and then if I choose, I can put it over here, even if somebody's on it. <laughs> and then you can also have like the sand roof right here. This one will trade two tiles. This one right here will will take all the element rooms in the direction of your choice. Oh, that's so fun. Then you can, and then, then you got the reroute and compass, which you can move two of these anywhere you want. So, these, so these, it helps you get guys. around the board a lot quicker. It really speeds the game. I can definitely see how that would add to that take that element. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, hey, I'm going to toss yeah, you on the yeah. other side of the board. Hey. Yeah. I, I've seen it, and it <laughs> happened to me hundreds of times. I don't know. You know why people pick on me. <laughs> uh, I can be right in front of that element gym and then somebody would move me. <laughs> or they would just mean? come in. Yeah. <laughs> so what's our end objective? What are we hoping you to wanna, do to win? Yeah, hence the name of Center Shaft. You want to go and get all that and then you want to get back to the center. Basically leaving the board. So there's your race yes. mechanic. Mm -hmm. And you got tiles that, that like this one right here you cannot pass over that unless you can fulfill the full number of that. So you, you would need like um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you got tiles like the pressure plate. There's a, you hit this one right there and say that you're in there and you have the arrow room. So if somebody's in that room, they take damage. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, You're a little Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's 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 one of those games where you're you're in a labyrinth and the labyrinth is basically 
uh, constructed, if you can so kind of show them the dimensional shift by there, this one right here. If you can see, it's kind of like a Rubik's Cube, story-wise. I mean, you got this giant Hulu-ish <laughs> thing manipulating it, story-wise. That's neat. So. Now, you guys had highlighted before we started filming a couple things that are going to be different. This is still your pre-production copy. Yes. Uh, so well, give us a quick tour of the, the things that are going to look even better when this, this is ready to oh, buy. Oh, we're going to have miniatures. Okay, so, so, and so, so instead of your little ponds yeah, there. So this will be like a, a sarcophagus, that will look like a sarcophagus. And then you'll have ponds, so you have them in the Oh, oh, wait, what your character thinks are going to be like? Oh, the back of the box, box yeah. actually. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you'll have all these four miniatures, and then there's little sarcophagus tokens uh, that go on there. Yeah. So, and you guys had mentioned too that this this box has a beautiful matte finish, mm -hmm. that your tiles will also have a matching yeah, matte. Because we noticed the glare, you know, it's a little distracting, here, <laughs> especially if you're kind of trying. <laughs> so, I was just glad that they will be able to provide that. Now, and I also wanted to highlight real quick too that you guys have had quite the team uh, oh, yeah. helping you out with here. Uh, so if you want to yes. give a little shout out to some of the people who helped gaming out. rules, Paul Grogan. Yes. He, he liked our game so much that he took it on. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like, did a fantastic yes. job. And we have uh, Sebastian Posner. He's, he did the layout for our game. And he's also going to be doing our Kickstarter page for us. He is awesome. He is a very awesome guy. And, uh, he's doing such a great job. Tyler Johnson. Yes. He did all the art for it. And he's very, he was very gracious with all of our changes. And, and he helped <laughs> yes. us. I mean, he's the one that kind of gave, helped us with the vision more than what we had sometimes. And it's impressive that one person did all your artwork. Yeah, yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. cool. I can believe it. Yeah, he was busy. <laughs> we kept him busy. Then we've got Andrew Forrester. He's the one that did the mini sculpting, and he's doing a great job with that. Um, we, we've got everything uh, completed with that, and so they will have full miniatures with mm -hmm. this. We try, we try to get it all done so that they won't have to wait so long. Yes. I hate it. Whenever you see a game on Kickstarter <laughs> and it's not done, a and year you wait. from now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> We want, for our first game, we wanted to go, you know, full hog. We just wanted to make it so that when they're getting this game, we're getting what they see. When do you think you guys are going to launch? October. Okay, so coming up soon. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to check that out, this is Center Shaft, Fallen Elements, and my big thanks to uh, George and Hattie Anthony for you co-creators here of uh, your game from your company, best company name, not my eyeball games. And thank you both for letting us take thank a sneak you. peek. All right, thank you so much.